How well does the MCU's 800th film stack up with the rest of the pack? Let's go deep inside Captain Marvel and find out. The indie duo Anna Boyden and Ryan Fleck co-write and co-direct this newest installment to the expansive franchise. The lack of experience when it comes to big budget movies shows a bit, as this one felt really uninspired. Often coming off like a cover band, putting out a greatest hits of more successful artists. There are shots and sequences that are very reminiscent to flicks such as Thor Ragnarok, Independence Day, Star Trek Insurrection, and many more. And that's perfectly well and good, except for it doesn't have an identity of its own. Same can be said for our lead hero Carol Danvers, aka Varys, aka Captain Marvel. Academy Award winner Brie Larson is more than capable to carry this film on her shoulders, and she has a lot of those staples you expect from superhero. I have no doubt that with a more competent script, she will easily excel in the role. As it stands, there's just not a whole lot to say about this character yet, which is sad because they had over two hours to tell a story. Her chemistry with Fury, as he prefers to go by, is definitely the strongest aspect of the story. Sam Jackson's clearly having fun here, it looks like he's on vacation from his actual role as Nick Fury. He's treated as more of a comic relief character this time, which seems kind of odd because he's young on the job, he's seen a lot of eye-opening things for the first time. And that was not an intentional pun for once. As it stands, the characters that come into contact with aliens and other crazy things just kind of roll with it cash. Goose the Cat does some cute cat stuff too. In case you're craving for something a bit more than the endless amount of hours you could spend online looking at them. Ben Mendelsohn is the most memorable newcomer to the series, playing an often confused alien named Talos. Jude Law gives a serviceable performance, it's nothing you're going to remember for years to come. Although his smoldering eyes and his ageless body that might stay with you until the day you die. He is a very attractive man. I had to say that. Agent Coulson also crops up here and there for really no reason at all. And he somehow lost his personality during the de-aging process they put him through. Often appearing in body, but not spirit. Just an empty husk of a man that once was. He did not de-age well. Jackson, on the other hand, well done to the makeup and CG department there. I wish everything else in this picture was given that much care and attention. I've heard and said myself over the years, that's probably who I heard it from initially, that these MCU movies sometimes feel like paint by numbers. The phrase, it feels like it was made on a conveyor belt, rings real loudly with this picture. If you aren't sick of the whole origin story shtick yet, you may never be. That, or you don't see every one of these damn movies like I do, which is perfectly acceptable and probably healthy. Had Captain Marvel been released in the Phase 1 cycle, some of my criticisms wouldn't be warranted. Alita Battle Angels sharing theaters with this movie, and it has a few commonalities with it. The largest being that both of our heroines have a heavy case of amnesia. They don't remember shit. The concept isn't new by any stretch of the imagination, but the way it's handled between the two films makes one far better than the other. Captain Marvel spends far too long in the first act establishing a group of characters that ultimately are meaningless. And nothing in that first 30 minutes help us connect with Carol in the slightest. In fact, I didn't even know her name at that point. Yet, we're doing these slow motion group shots of them going to planes and on missions, and I'm just thinking, like, what are we even doing right now? Once she hits Earth, it gets even worse before it inevitably gets better. There's a lot of just boring, ham-fisted dialogue mixed in with bizarre choices for flashback scenes. Couple that with slow detective work and lackluster action, and it just doesn't make for an interesting movie in 2019. It's impressive that we've reached a point now where an extremely powerful superhero flying up into space and blowing up ships is anything short of amazing. We've just had so much of this stuff now that it needs to go further, and higher, and faster, or whatever that is. Bottom line, I was not impressed with this in the slightest. And part of that is because I've seen all of these Marvel movies and I'm just kind of sick of it. Infinity War was awesome because it brought it all together. It, it made the scale so big and there were so many characters that we've grown up with and, and have liked in the last decade that it was fun to see it all play out. But these Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, and, and now this Captain Marvel, it's just, I, I don't care. I think the biggest disappointment for me personally was there was a really good, compelling story that could have been told here. And it, you could see the bones of it, they just weren't placed right. Tonally, it's a collective hodgepodge of different been there, done that's that you've seen before. We have our standard pop culture references and songs, but even those range from out of place to just completely missing the mark. This is a prequel movie, so by those standards, it rises above the ranks. 
because it's it's up against like some of the worst garbage out there. Like all prequels, it falls into those same trappings of thinking it needs to explain things that didn't need to be explained. Remember when we found out how Han got his legendary last name in Solo? Or that Nagini isn't even a snake, but a woman who's been turned into a snake with magic? Yeah, Captain Marvel has like two or three of these. <laughs> I hesitate to call this a bad movie because I enjoy fast food, so let me take it in a different direction for you. Humor me for a second. Let's say you're given a golden ticket that gives you unlimited Wendy's for an entire month, and much like myself, you're a big fan of the restaurant chain, so of course you go all in every single day. And most days you're going to get something familiar, something you enjoy, a junior bacon cheeseburger, a five-piece chicken nug, maybe a Coke to wash it all down, the sky's the limit. On occasion, you'll even kind of veer off the grid, go for that crazy pretzel bun or something completely stupid and bananas, and you might enjoy it. Because it's different, it's fresh, it's fun. But on occasion, you're going to have a bad experience that will almost hinder you from returning and leave you a bit sour. But you've had enough good experiences along the way, and you only have a few days left on this ticket, so you might as well use it to its full advantage, right? So you go back to Old Reliable again. But you're left a little bit unfulfilled by day 29. It's starting to taste very familiar and a little bit lackluster. Because after 29 days, things just aren't as exciting as they used to be. And that's what Captain Marvel is to me. It's the 30th day of eating Wendy's in a row. And honestly, I'm just sick of it. 